This week is Bell Let's Talk Day. This past year has been quite challenging and more people are reaching out for mental health support than before. So today we're gonna to talk about how to be a supportive friend or family member. Be There is a fantastic free online resource created by Jack.org. Be There will help you recognize when someone is struggling with their mental health and it provides you with five golden rules to help you support and be there for them. Recognizing warning signs is an essential first step of learning how to support someone. If you notice changes in their thoughts, feelings, or behaviors, they may be struggling with their mental health. Changes to look out for include intensity, long-lasting, and negative affecting. Signs someone may be struggling with their mental health include thoughts expressing intense hopelessness, worthlessness, or things that aren't there, feelings that are intense and long-lasting, and behaviors that are having a big impact in someone's life. Now that you know how to recognize if someone is struggling, here are the five golden rules to help support and be there for them. Say what you see, show you care, hear them out, know your role, and connect to help. Remember, being there for someone is an art, not a science. There isn't a formula to make everything better because each situation is unique. These golden rules are a guide to understanding how to be there for someone, regardless of circumstances. Say what you see. If you think your friend or family member may be struggling with their mental health, it's important to talk to them. It can be hard to tell if it's their mental health or their regular ups and downs of life. Regardless, it's best to reach out and say something. When starting the conversation, it's essential to stick to the facts. Describe the changes you've noticed, ask if they're okay, and tell them why you're worried. Don't judge or make assumptions, just say what you see. If you face any resistance, try not to take it personally. These conversations can be difficult, even when it's our best intentions. If the person is getting upset or starting to panic, it's best to ease off. Show you care. Showing you care can help create a safe environment. The person can build trust, which allows them to feel comfortable enough to open up about what they are going through. Being inclusive, compassionate, helpful, and a good listener in your everyday life shows others that you are a caring and safe person to reach out to. Actions speak louder than words. Even when you don't know what to say, you can provide practical support by asking them what type of support they need. When you are spending time with your friend, remember to put away your phone and make eye contact. Ask them if they want a hug, and if you start a tough conversation, make sure you have enough time to show you're prioritizing them. Hear them out. When trying to be there for someone, listening is the most important skill. Balancing the conversation by listening, asking questions, and sharing your thoughts or experiences makes you a good listener. Be supportive by trying to understand where they are coming from and don't preach, pry, or pretend to have the answers for everything. Remember, this conversation is about them. If listening is all you've done, then that's okay. If you ask questions, keep them open-ended and based on what they've said. Share your experiences wisely because it's not always necessary or helpful to give advice. It's important to empathize with them and to make them feel heard without imposing a solution. Know your role. Your role is to be there. This is not about you, so it's helpful to learn how to keep your own opinions and biases in check. Don't judge, preach, or downplay. Validate their feelings and experiences by making them feel heard and supported. Unless they ask you for your opinion, don't give advice because it can come off as dismissive. Minimizing their situation or being overly optimistic can imply that they are overreacting. When you're supporting someone with their mental health, it's important to set boundaries to maintain a healthy relationship. Your role is their friend, not their therapist. You only have so much capacity and this is where other supports come in. Protect your and their mental health by setting boundaries like what topics are off limits. If you're not in the right headspace, that's okay. It's better to come back to the conversation when you are in the right mindset. Connect to help. While you can't force someone to seek professional help, you can support them by finding resources for professional and community services and letting them know what to expect. If you know someone is struggling, seeking help early on has better outcome results. Supporting and encouraging them to reach out for help also normalizes help-seeking behavior. 
Remember to keep following up periodically if the person refuses to seek help and try encouraging them without pushing too hard. It's also important to follow up while they are in the recovery process because it shows you care. As you can see, this is a really helpful resource. Their website goes into much greater detail with engaging videos of personal experiences and questions from the community. To learn more, visit bethere.org. Remember to check in with yourself and loved ones, to make your health a priority, and to practice safe social distancing. Thanks for tuning in and have a great day.